for a few minutes. I welcome you into the peace of my own home. Welcome to Ms. Mojo. And today, we're counting down our picks for the speeches, public addresses, and even private moments from the crown that were recreated so well they could have been lifted straight out of history. I say from my heart. First, I want to pay tribute to Diana myself. Number 10, Prince Charles's investiture speech. In season three, the prince heads to Wales for a cultural immersion ahead of his investiture as the Prince of Wales. At one point during his speech, he switches to the local language, seemingly voicing solidarity with Welsh nationalism. A treftadai, a dewilliant canhenid, a hinaniai, a hanian, I personally I well canuddle. The accuracy of this moment has been hotly debated. However, it seems that what we see might capture the essence of the occasion more than a word for word recreation. My anerchiad, wed even hofforth. And do is. A gachlav a sikarhai for mod wedi kumrid solwi. His speech reportedly unsettled some establishment insiders who feared it could embolden nationalists. My gan gumri a hinani a tehin a hanian a hin a hewilis a hin. In the crown, the queen tells her son that no one wants to hear his opinions, but reality suggests there was some concern about his influence. Let me let you into a secret. No one wants to hear it. Are you talking about the country? My own family? Number 9. The Queen Launches HMS Britannia In Season 5, the Queen fights to keep her beloved royal yacht Britannia afloat. In a flashback, helmed by season 1 and 2 actress Claire Foy, we're taken back to the ship's launching ceremony in 1953. Like your brand new queen, will prove to be dependable and constant, capable of weathering any storm. This scene is actually a pretty accurate recreation of the real event. Sure, the crown stretched out the queen's address, but her final statement is basically the same. I name the ship Britannia. I wish success to her and to all who sail in her. If those yacht walls could talk, we imagine they'd have many stories to share, from historical landmarks to several royal honeymoons. It really meant a lot to the Queen and was often considered a, quote, floating palace. I wish success to her and to all who sail in her. Her Majesty releases the traditional bottle, not of champagne this time, but of Empire wine. Reportedly, she even shed some tears when it was ultimately decommissioned in 1997. Number 8. Tampon Gate When Season 5 addressed this very intimate moment between Prince Charles and Camilla Parker Bowles, many of us were probably thinking, no, that can't be real. I wish you would answer the phone. I never know what to say. We're alone now. I'm in the bedroom. In bed? on top of it. Lucky old bed. But then why would they make up something as cringy as that? The shock that it's true is still sinking in, isn't it? Well, what if we told you that it's actually an uncomfortably spot-on recreation? The real hypocrisy is pretending that there is any other reason for producing the contents of these tapes than to sell newspapers. For those who remember the 1993 leak, it may feel like a flashback to that confusing time. For those who only learned about it from The Crown, it's mind-boggling to think this isn't fiction. God, I wish I could just live inside your trousers or something so much easier. <laughs> what are you going to turn into, a pair of knickers? <laughs> <laughs> well, God forbid, a Tampax and just my luck. <laughs> At least the Crown somewhat helped reframe the narrative, redirecting blame to those who recorded, leaked, and shared it. Number 7. Whatever in Love Means This is another moment that we can't believe actually happened. In 1981, Prince Charles and Diana gave their first joint interview as an engaged couple. At one point, a reporter strangely asks if the couple is in love. In The Crown, Diana confidently says yes, but the Prince's reaction seems too shocking to be true. You both look very much in love. Oh, yes, absolutely. Whatever in love means. Surely that's just scripted drama, right? 
Well, listen for yourselves. Of course. <laughs> Whatever in love means. <laughs> Well, it you obviously means, means too. The collective crash of everyone's jaws hitting the ground upon discovering he actually said that is deafening. In Diana in her own words, the princess reportedly said, quote, That threw me completely. It traumatized me. And I said, I love you so much, I love you so much. And he said, Whatever love means. I said it then. And so I thought yeah. that was great. I thought he meant that. Talk about a red flag. We wish we could have told her to run. Number 6. The Panorama Interview In 1995, Princess Diana's riveting interview with Martin Bashir on BBC's Panorama gripped audiences worldwide. Seemingly nothing was off the table, including candid talks about mental health and marital struggles. Your husband is said to have rekindled his relationship with Mrs. Camilla Parker Bowles around 1986. Did this contribute to the breakdown of your marriage? Well, there were three of us in this marriage, so it's a bit crowded. With a reported 200 million global viewership, its impact and the aftermath endured for decades. The Crown condenses the almost hour-long interview into a sort of Cliff's Notes version that stays true to the real discourse. I'd like to be a queen of people's hearts, in people's hearts. I don't envisage myself ever being queen of this country. Reportedly, Elizabeth Debicki, who plays Diana, and Prasanna Puana Raja, who portrays the journalist, underwent voice and body language training to help them faithfully recreate this widely watched episode. Also, they couldn't leave out one of the most infamous quotes to emerge from it, now could they? Well, there were three of us in this marriage, so it was a bit crowded. <laughs> Number 5. The Queen's 21st Birthday Address On April 21st, 1947, while visiting Cape Town, Princess Elizabeth delivered a speech to the youth of the empire in celebration of her 21st birthday. Season 4 treats us to this memorable moment in another Foy flashback. If you watch The Crown's version while reading along with the source material's transcript, you'll notice how impressively they align. I am thinking especially today of all the young men and women who were born about the same time as myself. Naturally, The Crown had to make some trims. They do have a runtime to adhere to, after all. But other than that, it's practically verbatim. Whether it be long or short, shall be devoted to your service and to the service of our great imperial family to which we all belong. Filming it in black and white would have been the only way to make it even more authentic. It even concludes with the princess's poignant vow to the empire. I declare before you all that my whole life whether it be long or short, shall be devoted to your service. Number 4. Edward VIII's Abdication Speech Season 1, Episode 3 throws back to December 11, 1936, as King Edward VIII publicly announces his decision to step down from the throne so he could marry Wallace Simpson, an American divorcee. And now that I have been succeeded by my brother, the Duke of York, my first words must be to declare my allegiance to him." The series once again gives us an abridged take of the actual speech, but the included dialogue is essentially pulled from the pages of history. But I have found it impossible to carry the heavy burden of responsibility and to discharge my duties as king as I would wish to do. In his address, the former king delves into the reasons behind his choice and hands over the reins see what we did there? to his brother. Reportedly, BBC staff defied higher-ups to air their interview, even reshuffling their schedule to accommodate it. Today, it's hailed as a milestone in broadcasting history. And to discharge my duties as king, as I would wish to do, without the help and support of the woman I love. Number 3. The Queen's First Televised Christmas Speech Influenced by her encounter with Lord Altrincham in this Season 2 episode, the Queen changes her usual Christmas address from radio to television. We're not sure how much the real Altrincham and his critical article affected her decision, but it seems the Queen herself led this transition, wanting to stay current and connect more personally with the public. Today is another landmark, because television has made it possible for many of you to see me in your homes on Christmas Day. Back then, these Christmas greetings were broadcast live, 
reaching millions nationwide and creating a shared holiday moment with the reigning monarch. But who never really touches your personal lives. But now, at least for a few minutes, I welcome you to the peace of my own home. The Crown impressively revives this experience with striking accuracy, capturing the dialogue practically word for word. Plus, Foy skillfully captures the likely nervousness felt by the young queen during this royal first. Young and old, wherever you may be, all the fun and enjoyment and peace of a very happy Christmas. Number two, Churchill's eulogy for King George VI. When the death of the king was announced to us yesterday morning, there struck a deep and somber note in our lives. This former British prime minister is renowned for his iconic speeches. Frankly, if we were a writer for The Crown, we'd hesitate to tackle the daunting task of reimagining his dialogue, knowing ours would only pale in comparison. The king was greatly loved by all his peoples. So it's no surprise they leaned heavily on his actual words when reenacting Churchill's public address after the king's passing. Primetime Emmy winner John Lithgow delivers an impeccable portrayal, transporting us back in time with impressive authenticity. Like her namesake, Queen Elizabeth I, did not pass her childhood in any certain expectation of the crown. He skillfully conveys the emotional impact on Churchill, who shared a tight professional camaraderie with the king during and after the Second World War. The loss of both a monarch and potentially a friend is poignantly felt. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. The Queen's Public Address Following Diana's Passing In August 1997, news of Diana's death shook the world. It is not easy to express a sense of loss, since the initial shock is often succeeded by a mixture of other feelings. As depicted on The Crown, the British public grew agitated, waiting for some kind of public acknowledgement from the monarch. True to history, the Queen eventually issued a televised statement. In good times and bad, she never lost her capacity to smile and laugh, nor to inspire others with her warmth and kindness. The outfit and setting seen in the series are spot on, and the dialogue is so accurate she could have been reading directly from the Queen's actual teleprompter. You could seamlessly overlay the two versions, and we doubt anyone would be the wiser. Tomorrow, we can all, wherever we are, join in expressing our grief at Diana's loss and gratitude for her all too short life. The biggest gripe viewers had was the peculiar lighting choice, which differed from the actual address and needlessly lowered the visual quality. Setting that aside, the precision of this recreation is truly uncanny. It is a chance to show to the whole world the British nation united in grief and respect. Are you impressed by the attention to detail in these public addresses? Did you spot any similarities in other speeches in the series? Let us know in the comments. I very much hope that this new medium will make my Christmas message more personal and direct. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.